Hi everyone joining us today for our webinar on data-driven HR, measuring the ROI of our people. I'm just going to give it a few moments just to let um, anyone who's not been able to just join uh, quite on time to join us. So the webinar will be starting shortly. Okay, thank you everyone for joining us today. I will um, just kind of go a bit slower for the intro just to give um, anyone who's joining or hasn't had a chance to join on time a chance to catch up. So um, just as a starting point then to say, um, please do feel free to ask any questions throughout the webinar. Um, there's obviously the chat function and there's also the question and answers um, as well. So if you have any questions, if you want to drop them into, into those um, either of those two areas and I will answer those at the end. And I'll also at, open up to questions as well at the end of the webinar. So any questions, please do drop them in there. I know that it's always better when these um, sessions are a little bit more interactive. So it'd be good to hear um, from you guys as we go through. Um, so yeah, please let me know if there is anything that you would like me to cover. So today's webinar is on data, data-driven HR and measuring the return of investment of our people. Um, I think HR um, can quite um, traditionally be seen as a service provider there to hire and fire, or when we talk about employee engagement, some still see that as fluffy uh, and nice to have rather than business essentials. So what I wanna do today is look at um, data and the importance um, of that data and using data within HR. <coughs> so before we get started, just a little bit about me. So I am Kelly Tucker. I am the Managing Director of HR Star. HR Star are HR consultancy. We are based in the Cotswolds, but we provide HR support to businesses throughout the UK and even further afield um, in the USA. Um, we are um, predominantly focus on employee engagement. So we work with businesses of varying shape, industry, uh, size, and we work in a proactive way, looking at how we can enhance people's experience to create highly engaged teams, because we know that highly engaged teams lead to successful businesses. So I've worked in HR for 20, over 20 years, and HR Star has been going for about seven and a half. Um, and as I say, you know, we are working with, with businesses to look at the employee life cycle and how we can ensure that each stage of that employee life, life cycle is as effective as it can be and provides the best experience for people so that we get what we need out of our people. Uh, they get what they need out of us as business owners, as business leaders, as HR professionals to ensure that we have less um, problems with low productivity, high absence, high turnover, etc. So when I talk to businesses and I, and I talk to them about the importance of this proactive HR and focusing on employee engagement, a lot of the um, first response I get from that is how, how do you know it works? How can you prove it works? So I know it works because I've done it for a long time and I know what we need to do when we look at each of those areas of the employee life cycle from how we can we recruit the best people to onboard them, um, measure their and manage their performance to reward and recognition, well-being, learning and development. But how do I prove that it works? Well, that's where data is really, really important. And if you are uh, you know, HR professional or a business leader, and you need to convince somebody of the benefits of investing in your people, then data is going to be your best friend. You are going to need that data to be able to show the, the impact that doing these things have on the business. So today I want to look at what are HR analytics. So when we're gathering data, what should we be looking at? What do we want to analyze? What do we want to be measuring? 
Um, why do we need these analytics within HR? And as I've just touched on, I think it's really important to be able to show the, the impact that our work is having what we should be measuring so yeah again you know where where should we be looking at gathering this data and and looking at measuring and and having analytics to show the impact and how to measure the roi of our people so when we are doing all these things how do we then show that we are you know getting a return on our investment that investment that we're putting into our people and when i talk about investment i mean in terms of time and obviously financial investment as well and as I said at the end, there will be a, uh, an opportunity for everyone to ask any questions, um, and I will try to you know get through those um, as best as I can. So HR analytics, what is it? So HR analytics is the use of data and analytics to help organisations make better decisions about their human resources, so their people. By analysing data on employee performance, engagement, turnover, HR professionals, business leaders, managers can identify trends and patterns that can help them improve their policies and practices. So with the capabilities of HR analytics, organisations can gain valuable insights into their workforce performance to optimise and elevate people's success. So as I've touched upon already, we need this information to be able to make informed decisions, improve the, the, the policies, the procedures, the way that we look after our people, and to ultimately improve the success of the organization. By unlocking this powerful resource, we're helping employees make data-driven decisions that maximize employee potential while improving overall organizational, organizational output. Sorry. Um, and I think we, you know, we, we will all agree that data and the use of data has just been increasing and becoming more and more important, whichever organization we work in, whichever department we're within, people want data. People want to know that the stuff that they're doing is working. They want to see and be able to measure um, the impact of their actions. So HR is just the same. And I think it will really help HR to be seen as, you know, an organ as a department, sorry, that you know, really is important to the performance and the overall success of the business. So intelligent, let me just move myself out of the way there. Intelligent HR is data-driven HR. So again, I think when we're looking at this, what the way I think about it is HR is, as I say, traditionally been seen as a service provider, that department that is there to hire, fire, send out contracts of a point of employment, et cetera. And what we're we're seeing it being moved to, and various reasons for this, the pandemic definitely um you know move this up the agenda and um excel this is hr being more people-led and more around the employee experience more proactive so organizations that are thriving are really putting time and resource into ensuring that they are connecting with their people they're providing the right environment for their people to thrive they are linking their people strategies to their business plans and if we do that that's what we're calling intelligent hr and that will be driven by data so data-driven HR is a rapidly growing trend as organizations recognize its potential to maximize the efficiency of their workforce. And insights into employees' behavior, HR teams can measure metrics that are both unique and valuable, providing critical business intelligence with far-reaching implications for an organization's performance. Using data and people management not only allows companies to make better decisions related to human resources, but also strengthens decision-making on people matters at all levels of leadership. And I've seen this firsthand um, I've gone into businesses and working with new clients and sort of asked them how, how engaged are your people, how are your people feeling, what is it that they would change about the organisation, what do they enjoy, and I've been met with a response of, oh, all my people are fine, there's nothing they would change, they're really happy, and I'm like, okay, well, let me speak to your people, so I do a project called Real Insights, so sit down and do one-to-ones and give you know um, everybody in the organisation a voice and an opportunity to talk about what their challenges are, what they enjoy, how engaged they feel, etc., and then I can go back to that leadership team with my data and show them the areas where they need to make improvements, the areas where they're doing really well to continue doing that, and the areas where they need to do better, and also taking into consideration what the people want, using their feedback to inform the decisions and the changes we make will in, a, in turn make the people more engaged because they feel listened to, and that's a major part of, of employee engagement. There are many potential benefits of using HR analytics by making better decisions about hiring, so we can use it within the recruitment process, training and development, again, like making sure that we understand what development and training is needed within our business, how that's impacting on individuals. 
Um, obviously, then we can look at um, a, a turnover, improving engagement, organisations can save money and increase prof productivity by reducing staff churn, absence, improving uh, performance. So really, you know, data, data is so, so important. Um, why do we need it? Again, so these are just some of the snapshots discover patterns in team performance. If we're using data and we're measuring um, performance on with numbers or with, with you know, a scale and metric, we can show when teams are performing well, or if there's certain peaks and troughs in performance, we can start looking at a bigger picture in that to try and understand why. We can anticipate needs for resource investments. So again, if we're tracking churn within an organization, not only can we try and address that, we can also look at peaks and troughs, like match with our productivity numbers to know that when we would potentially need to resource, make resource investments, whether that be through people, more training, more support, et cetera. And we can understand how employee turnover, um, in hiring time scales and learning development effectiveness it impacts your organization. So again, so like hiring time scales, how long is it taking us to hire using data? to capture that information. We know in future when we need to bring people into our organization, the time that that is likely to take. So we can factor that into our workforce planning. So there is really no end to how important data is. And while there are many potential benefits using HR analytics, there are some challenges and it wouldn't be right for me to present one side of this. So they, you, know, you do need to, to consider this. And one of these challenges is that data cannot provide all the answers. So whilst today I'm talking about the importance of data and what we can use data for, never replace that with you know, the human element of, or, of doing more around that. So if our data is showing us that there's a, a drop in performance within, within a, a department, let's ha then have a conversation, let's use our management skills to find out why. And we need to consider the context in which you know, the data was collected, who collected the data, um, and also, look at then like I say the bigger picture and why there may be some reasons for for that productivity dip so then it's like what should we measure you know how do we know that, that we're measuring the right thing how much of this stuff do we measure you know who what how and I think that really does depend on the the organization and what it is that you want from the information but here are some of the key things that um and areas that that businesses do measure so staff turnover so at what rate are people leaving the organization um high staff turnover usually indicates you know a negative something negative within the organization as in people you know you're churning out people at a high rate and so it's really important then if we're if we use if we're looking at staff turnover and we believe that's high to again not taking that information in isolation let's look at the reasons has there been a restructure there's been some redundancy that are impacting on that turnover if not okay are we doing things like exit interviews to gather information to try and find out why people are leaving and then looking at ways that we can prevent that and then also within that are we doing stay interviews so like making sure that we're checking in with our people on a regular basis to try and reduce that staff turnover um, absenteeism again a great one to track if we believe that we've got high absence within within the organization that's obviously going to be impacting them on performance in terms of department teams um, and the overall of, of business so absenteeism, let's measure with that. Are we, are we logging when people are sick? Are we running reports on that? Are we using something like a Bradford factor to, to manage that? Um, so again, also looking at that, if someone's got high absence, let's explore it further by doing a welfare meeting with them to try and understand the reasons for that. Time to hire. So as I touched on earlier, how long has it taken us to fill vacancies so that we know in future when we do have the need that we can ensure that we're allowing the adequate time scales. And also if it's taken us a long time to hire, being able to do use that information to explore a bit further in terms of our recruitment methods, um, perhaps, you know, how we're recruited isn't working, perhaps but we, you know, we haven't done any salary benchmarking, so we're not pitching it at the right level, the role, etc. Are our job descriptions and job ads written well? So again. It, it gives us um, insights and then it gives us an opportunity to explore these issues further. Cost to hire again, how much is it costing us? It's cost us a lot to hire people. Do we want to review that and look at uh, other ways that we can look to reduce that? Again, you know, all of these in turn, we would want to reduce absence to, to ensure that we weren't hiring is more than we needed to. And then engagement rating. So that's something we do a lot of at HR Star is look at how we can measure 
how engaged our, our people are. And engagement is never done. So it's something we need to continually measure to ensure that we're continually looking for ways that we can keep our people engaged. So there are just some uh, metrics there that we can measure to ensure that we have a really good uh, picture of what's happening within our organization. So just to explore, on, uh, sorry, to deep dive on a little bit, some of these a bit more. So how to find the analysis gained from HR metrics to decision making. So if we're measuring some of those things I talked about in the previous slide, what are we then going to do to, to, you know, what does that tell us then? How is that going to impact on our decision making within the business? So reducing the time to hire meeting, get the best people for the job because good candidates are not on the market for long. So we want to be able to like snap up the best candidates when we're looking to bring new talent within our organisation. Obviously, improving employee turnover means you keep your most valuable resources. And we know at the moment that recruitment and retention and retention more so and retaining our best people is absolutely key. So let's make, you know, let's be looking at those turnover numbers, let's be finding out why our people are leaving so that we can hopefully avoid that and retain our best people. Um, prevention of absence saves money and keeps productivity high. So obviously we know the knock-on effect of people aren't um, within in the business because they're sick, it's an unplanned absence, so their work doesn't get done or it impacts others who have to cover, et cetera, it's going to affect your productivity. And understanding employees' needs leading to a more productive and satisfied workforce. So measuring engagement, as we said, will really help with productivity. We know that more engaged people equals business success because they're more productive, because they're more motivated, they feel valued. So what are we doing to, to track that to ensure that we are maintaining a highly engaged workforce? So there are obviously a few different ways that HR analytics can be used. We can predict future trends, analyzing data on past performance through exit interviews. We can make better decisions about the people that we hire, how we train our employees. We can also use it to identify problems and areas for improvement within organizations. So like looking at the, um, obviously the engagement uh, scores, et cetera. And um, we can also look at how we can increase productivity. So if, if we're measuring learning and development activity and we see that we're, we're not doing enough in that area, then maybe that's impacting on our performance, maybe that's impacting on turnover. So let, yeah, let, yet again, this data gives us some insight to, to then go off and do further um, exploratory work to find out why these things you know, are happening within, within our business. So just wanted to run through with you some of the pros and cons of um, measuring and using uh, HR metrics. So the pros obviously we can make better data driven decisions and we know in this day and age people want data, pay, people want to be able to make informed decisions, so we have data to be able to make those decisions. It reduces our reliance on intuition or guesswork and I think again that's will really strengthen in, in terms of our kudos and our ability to to make uh, recommendations to business leaders that are people related within our business by being able to say I have data to support my my proposal to support um, my reasons why I think this is happening within the organization or support why I want to make changes we understand retention rates and improve employee engagement and again we know that businesses who have engaged employees do much better we can recruit and hire the best talent for our organization and again that's so important right now we want to keep hold of those really good people and if we want to and need to bring people into our businesses we want them to be the best and we can forecast trends in hr data so our people data will allow us if we collect enough of it over time to start seeing trends and how our businesses operate and how the employee life cycle within our business works and within that we'll be able to really create people strategies and people plans that really are bespoke and fit with our business which again will support the business plan and as a business owners being able to achieve that through their people so there are some cons, I suppose, or certain challenges, I would say, in terms of um, collecting data and using um, HR matrix. So HR departments can lack the statistical and analytical skill set to work with large data sets, which can hinder their ability to make good decisions with a company. So I think, yes, it's it's not just a case of, OK, off I go, I'm going to go and then create um, sorry, collect a load of data on something and make loads of decisions. I think we have to be careful about, OK, what are we going to measure? How are we going to measure it? And there are obviously um, platforms like Lanteria, which would allow us to collect data to be able to then analyse that data and use it for making these informed decisions. But it is something that you need to put some thought into and, and plan it out really carefully. 
different management and reporting systems within organisation can make it difficult to aggregate and compare data, making it difficult to get a clear picture of what's happening in different areas of the company. Absolutely. And I think if we're using just obviously, for example, people data, then we need to be able to have a solution within the business that you're collecting your data in the same way and ideally in a central place. So I know that Lanteria will enable that to happen. So you have all your people information in one place. That means that you're comparing likes for likes and you're collecting and data in, in the same way. And sometimes access to quality data can be an issue for some organisations who do not have up-to-date systems, do not have access to all the relevant data. So yet again, I know that if you're using Lanteria, that will give you the platform to be able to keep all of this information up to date and in one place. So that's, you know, that's the first kind of hurdle is like making sure you have the data or, or you have a way to collect and capture this data. So you want a really good system like Lanteria to be able to do that for you so that you know that you've got that data, you're collecting it in one place to enable you to um, use it and yeah, absolutely use it really well. So there, the slight, uh, there are some pros and cons there. So how to measure the uh, return on, on investment of our people. So there's lots of things that we can look at here. So we've talked about, obviously, all the, the ways that we can capture data and what that, that sort of tells us. So improved work quality, such as an increased sales and productivity figures or decreased customer complaints turnover rates and increases in profitability through high growth margins or revenue is an obvious one. I think, you know, the majority of people are in business to, to make money, and that's absolutely fine. Um, but we want to ensure that, you know, as a business, we have the best people in our business doing the, their best work to enable them to be as productive as possible. Um, we measure data, we invest in our people, and then as such, we should have improved work quality and all of these things that come with it. Surveying employees on a regular basis to assess satisfaction scores further reinforces the effectiveness of any initiatives you may be implemented within your organization. So one thing I always talk about, it's great to do these employee surveys and to gather all the information from your people. But then if you don't do anything with that information, you might as well not collect it in the first place. So we want to collect that data, share the results with our people, and then let them know what we're going to be changing um, as a result of that. And you might not always be able to change everything that your people want, and that's fine. I think it's about saying to them, you know, you said that you wanted this, we can't do this, this is why. You said you want this, we can do this. And then what you'll see, the more you do these surveys and the more that you implement off the back of them from the feedback, is you should see your engagement score increasing. So because people will trust in the process, they will see that they have a voice, they're heard, and that things happen when they share their feedback. So by collecting this data over a period of time and you see your engagement score increasing, you should be able to co correlate that with your productivity and therefore your um, turnover, um, revenue, et cetera, increasing as well. So that's how you really do see the, the, um, the impact of of you know in measuring that how that investment you're making through collecting the data doing your employee engagement initiatives is actually having then on on the overall business by lever leveraging data hr teams are quickly transforming into a powerhouse of insights like this is so true i'm seeing this a lot and it's something we do as standard hr star you know gather data provide the insights to our clients and you know it, it is transforming how we are seen and how the hr function is seen within a business People remain the cornerstone for success. And I say this so many times, your business um, would be nothing without your people. So we need good people and we need to be looking after our people. Um, with access to ever-growing analytics, HR's relevance and value is magnifying at exponential rate. And it is, we've seen obviously in the time of the pandemic, HR's role was massively pushed into to the spotlight in terms of people like, oh yeah, HR do that. So when we were looking at how do we furlough people, HR, how do we set people up for working from home, HR, how do we implement more flexible working, HR, um, how do we implement hybrid working, HR. So, you know, we have really um, sort of been, been seen now as a department for good and I think we can just build on that even more now by leveraging data and that the decisions that we can influence and the insights that we can provide to business leaders through people data is is going to be exponential absolutely intelligent and data-driven HR is the way of the future with its goal to consistently maximize performance throughout an organization and um, so we need to obviously, uh, by leveraging emerging technology as a machine learning and artificial intelligence, alongside traditional analytical tools, people manage to become more efficient in adding considerable value for money 
for any business's success. So again, yeah, you know, why, why should we doing this stuff? So many reasons, increased productivity, improved quality, reduced costs, because if you can make decisions and take the guesswork out of recruiting decisions, et cetera, why people might be leaving and fix that, you're gonna be massively reducing the cost to a business, enhanced customer service, happy engaged employees, give better customer service. So if our customers are happy, they're going to buy more. It's going to be good for the business. And obviously, obviously like I said, it, it does lead to increased sales. So it really is, is a massive game changer if, if you, you take this on board and you, and you do this data-driven HR. So obviously, again, like how does it work? So it offers innovative problem solving for organizations, empowering them to make informed and accurate decisions. By gathering relevant data as a starting point, stakeholders can measure it against existing historical information on benchmarks in order to decide for meaningful trends and patterns. So again, we touched on with the engagement surveys, then you will see that increase as you know, if you invest and do it properly, the increased engagement score with increased sales. Again, if you invest in measuring uh, turnover, and you then, you know, you invest in making a change based on the information you're getting from that turnover, you'll see a reduction in turnover. Um, the analysis of this collective knowledge will inform better organization decision make, making with long, with lasting effects on performance outcomes. And it, you know, it really, really will. Um, and I'm sort of repeating my point here, but, you know, the data, data will be the future and will drive our decisions more and more. So if we look at turnover as an example, High employee turnover can be a costly problem for, for companies. And then we saw high turnover as we came out of the pandemic and people moving around and the war for talent. So, you know, lots of employers experienced high turnover. HR analysts can provide the guidance needed to prevent it from becoming an ongoing issue. So through data collection analysis of past turnover, as well as current employee behaviour, such as performance and engagement levels, organisations are empowered with better insight into how likely employees may quit in the future. This understanding helps build predictive models that alert employees early when they need intervention, ultimately maximizing any associated losses or disruptions caused by high staff departure rates. And one thing that you just I touched on in there, which I wanted to explore, um, expand on sorry, a little bit more, is not looking at one, one particular thing in isolation. So if, for instance, we just look at turnover, and say an organization has low turnover we're like okay so they're great the, you know the turnover is low in this organization but we're not seeing high productivity we need to look at something else if then we look at engagement and we see engagement is low but turnover is low this this is not you know this gives us the data to explore further so in isolation turnover being low looks like a great thing Employment uh, engagement, sorry, low. And then I explore a little bit further, and I find out it's because the the organisation gives really pays really high salaries, gives really high bonuses, really good benefits. So you might think, oh, that's fantastic. It is in some respects, but they don't measure people's performance. So what we're finding is a lot of people are sat in a role that they're not engaged in or particularly happy in, but because they are paid so well and they receive such good benefits, and their performance isn't measured. For some people, that they will sit there just because they're not going to get the same deal somewhere else. So by looking at turnover and isolation in that example, it doesn't give us the full picture. We have to look at it in line with other matrix and then again, use that data to do further exploring. Recruitment. So I know that we obviously, like I said, again, talking about the, the battle for um, the war for talent. So organisations are seeking candidates that not only have the right skill set, but also the right attitudes that match with the organisation's culture and performance needs. So at HR Star, we do a lot on company uh, values and how we thread those values through all of our people processes to ensure that we're bringing in the right people in the first place. So shifting through hundreds of thousands of resumes and adding a recruitment decision on, on basic information is limiting. More so potential candidates can be overlooked. Absolutely. And we've all probably been there where the recruitment process is lengthy. And we're just making our decisions based on a CV initially and then on a short interview process. So using analytics, we can enable fast automated collection of candidate data from multiple sources because there are so many ways now that we can recruit, gain deep insights into candidates by considering extensive variables like depart, development opportunities and cultural fit. So data will enable us to identify candidates with attributes that are comparable to the top form employees in the organisation. So let's look at who's performing really well on within our organisation and take those as measures for when we're going out to bring people into the business. So this is just the turnover and the recruitment, the two examples there of how data can really, really um, improve and enhance those two areas of, of business. 
So Hecken Land Area Help, I've touched on it already in terms of the importance of gathering good data and what we can then do with that data. Um, but Landshare can really get analytical insights for better management decisions through customizable reports, charts, dashboards, created for business transparency with HR document management. So as I'm sure you all know, our land here are, are you know, a, a one place where you can have all your people data. That's the starting point, capturing the right data. But then Landshare can take us one step further in terms of being able to pull and customize reports, pull off dashboards, have full transparency of the information. So as a business, we need to be looking at if we're you know, really serious about using data. How effective has HR analytics been in my company to date? Am I using it? If not, why am I not using it? Have I not got the information? Do I not record it? Do I not know how to, to you know, the next steps with it? And as, you know, Lanteria, myself, it can help with this as well. So, you know, in your business, have you been able to use HR analytics to improve employee retention? Do you know? Do you measure engagement? Do you have a platform like Lanteria where you can make sure you've got access to all of this information? Uh, what have you found to be the best way to use your HR analytics? You know, if you are gathering data, how are you using that? You, you know, uh, uh, is it is it impacting? If so, brilliant. What else can you add to that to make more informed decisions? If not, okay, let's go back to the drawing board. What are we measuring? How are we presenting that information? Uh, there will be challenges, um, and as I said, you know, it depends on the, the quality of the information. And normally, anything's only as good as the data you put in. So, making sure we're collecting the data. You know, exit interviews. How are we gathering that information? How are we um, recording our turnover, et cetera? Um, and yeah, and so HR Analytics, using a platform like Lanteria can really aid with being able to take that next step. So simple tracking of the company structure, headcount, turnover, quality and diversity. Again, I've not really touched on it in this webinar, but in quality and, and diversity is something that we want to see more transparency around. Are we measuring this? Are we looking at the data within our organization to ensure that we are an inclusive um, employer? Employees availability, who's in, is uh, when they're going to be on leave, where they are. So even again, without having data at that level to be able to give us quick information at our fingertips, especially in a remote, in a hybrid working um, workplace, you know, Lantura provide us with, with a quick snapshot to be able to see where everyone is. And then a quick analysis of candidate pipeline and stages. So again, talk about that recruitment process and looking at time to hire, cost to hire. We can use uh, a platform to be able to look at where we're on that recruitment process. Setting competencies and goals for employees. We know that, excuse me, engaged employees are those that feel they have a purpose, they're part of the bigger picture. Are we taking our business goals and feeding them down to each individual within the business? And are we tracking their progress against that to measure productivity? And um, building your online library of learning materials. Because again, you know, people learn through um, analyzing data, being seen, you know, what's happening, what's past trends to predict what's going to happen in the future. So being able to access the information that you're gathering is also going to be really key. So, you know, if you're taking that time to, to collect this data, do something with it, but then don't just like leave it, go back to it, go back and review. Sometimes we don't realize how far we come until we reflect. So by having that data to reflect upon, you'll be able to see the progress that you're making and other further changes that need to still be made. Um, so I think I have, um, you know, sort of shown there the importance of, of data, how we should be measuring, what we should be measuring. And I can't stress enough that the importance um, of data and, and the more and more um, important role that it's going to play, it's, you know, in the future of HR and um, every department, to be honest. So I hope that you found this um, interesting and helpful. If you have any questions, please do ask them now. Um, but if you um, have to dash or if you want to follow me afterwards, then I'm Kelly Tucker, HR star, and I can be found um, um, on LinkedIn and also my past webinars are on the Lanterra resource pages as well. So I see. Okay, I've got a question here. Is one-on-one -on -one discussions the best for measuring employee engagement? That's a really, really good question. So for me, there's various ways to measure employee engagement. I think the obvious one that we all think about is an in, um, engagement survey so where we send out a survey to everyone to to gather the information and they can be really useful to, to capture all information from everyone i recommend doing them more than um annually i think traditionally they were an annual survey you sent out loads of questions and you just took that insights once a year for me i 
think service should be done more regularly and maybe like less questions or more specific about something that's actually happening within the organization that you need to gather some feedback on. So I think that's good in terms of a temperature check or an overall feel of how the organization is feel, feeling. But you cannot be a one-to-one -one discussion. So I recommend every manager should be sitting down at least once a month with their reports and having a one-to-one -one with them. And that's, you know, to catch up on things like how things going, what are you working on, what are you um, being challenged by, um, are there anything, um, any training needs that you have, just a, to build that relationship so that the employee knows that if they need to talk to somebody, they, 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 they can, they feel valued, that someone's checking in on them, they feel they have a voice. Um, and then also there's the annual review process, which is really important, a major review where you are sort of set and those longer term objectives, looking at performance against uh, previous objectives, discussing training needs. So for me, communication is everything. So the more you can communicate, the better. So I would say in answer to that question, yeah, a real variety from surveys to one-to-ones to the perform performance review as well. So um, yeah, hopefully that helps. Thank you for your question. Do we have any further questions? No. Oh, how to build the trust to have an honest answers from employees. OK, so that will come over time. Um, trust is something that um, it does take time to build in trust with trust with your employees. And that's why regular communication is really important. So um, one that will come through regular conversation and taking the time to ensure that, um, you know, you, you do you are interested, you are invested in your people. To by making sure that when you say you're going to have a one to one with your, your people, you stick to it. And three, by following up on things that you say you're going to do. So if you have a discussion with your employee and you promise you're going to go and look into something for them, or you're going to get back to them about something, then go and do that. Again, with surveys, if you take the time to survey, make sure that you share the results and that when you follow up uh, action and feedback that you actually action you do and you tell people what you've done. And if you do those things, regular communication, following up on 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 what you say you're going to do setting clear expectations sticking with those rewarding and recognizing good performance good um good work and our values etc the trust will come it will take a little time to build but it will come um so that should again happen through continual communication hello my name is alexi and i'm a product consultant for Lanteria and during the following next minutes we will be talking about these areas. How to manage the company structure using Lanteria HR together with all the reports, headcount, turnover, quality, diversity and things like that. Uh, how to track the employees availability who was absent, is absent or will be absent. Uh, what is it like to manage the candidate pipeline inside of Lanteria HR? Uh, how to set the competencies and goals and the online learning library and how to make it simple for your employees. So first of all, Lanteria has a number of structural reports. Some of them are on the dashboard over here where we can see the number of employees by months or units and some other information. Plus there is an organizational chart. If we go over here, we will see the chart of the company like this. Lanteria is very flexible in terms of cost centers, uh, locations, countries, cities, and anything like this. Uh, more information about the structure, diversity, and other things can be found in the reports module over here. So we have, for example, the equality and diversity report. Uh, if some report is missing and you really need something custom, you can just go and build your customized report. That is very easy. Our consultants can spend a few minutes and train you how to use this custom report builder. So the next area is how to track the employee's availability, uh, leaves, absences, vacations, sicknesses, business trips, whatever. So uh, when you are a manager, you can see a dashboard with all the pending, leave requests of your employees over here where you can approve them or you can reject them or you can propose some changes and also you can see the schedule of your employees or your subordinate employees leaves so these are the people whom you manage 
these are the types of the leaves in different colors. You can add your custom types of the leaves. That's not a problem at all. And these are their leaves. We can see the periods of time just like that. Plus we have the filters here, which will allow us to see the leaves in any other period of time. I don't know, in the last or in the previous quarter, in the previous year and anything like that. By the way, some of our customers use this for tracking if somebody is working from home right now, because obviously work from home can be just one of the patterns of the leaves that the company has. Uh, the next one is candidate pipeline. So we go over here. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that you can create your own statuses for the candidates just for your own convenience in order uh, to differentiate who is where, like these candidates have just sent their CVs and these candidates are waiting for the interview to be scheduled. And those candidates are considering the job offers, something like this. So you can create your custom steps or stages that is this is very very simple inside of lentira hr the candidates are here from here you can schedule the interviews you can shortlist people you can move them from one stage to another stage in the pipeline and you can also send a custom job offer from within the system the next one would be um setting the competencies and goals so uh, before we go further i would like to say that you can upload all the job roles that are available in your company together with the applicable competencies. For example, the senior manager, this is the job role of Tanya Coleman. So any senior manager, according to my example, needs to have some data analysis, skills, cooperation, ability to motivate, and more. So these can be uploaded together with the job role or with many job roles, different job roles may have different required skills and competencies. And this one, this one, these will be the results of the most recent assessment. So you will be able to compare how any employee complies with the expectations set by the company. So the upper one, uh, this is what what is required according to the job role requirements and this one below is what the employee is capable of regarding the goals it is possible to assign any goals to the people qualitative or quantitative depending on what is the origin of the goal uh, if it's about the quality i don't know i should improve my appearance for example i should dress better because i meet the customers that will be about the quality probably but if we're talking about like sales something that is close to me um if we're talking about money obviously we'll be talking about numbers so we will be assigning a quantitative goal just like that so when you create a goal you will be able to assign it to some parent goal or you can ignore this step any goal will have its start and due date the date by when it should be a uh, completed uh, target result the actual result and some other fields. Everything that you see on the screen is customizable. So if you need some custom fields or sections, you can easily create them. And the last point, online learning library. So uh, you will be able to upload all your media materials inside of Lanteria HR. So these may be videos, audios, PDF documents, gamified e-learning courses, maybe links to third party resources. And based on those files or materials, you will be able to organize a kind of uh, a learning environment. So any employee will be able to use the personal dashboard, click over here and go inside of the corporate learning catalog. The employees are not able to delete or upload something. They are able to add the courses to their own uh, schedules or um, if the company requires that some courses must first be approved by the management in that case uh, you can put that in the settings of the course and the employee will, will first have to send you a request you will consider it approve it or reject it and only then the employee gets the access to the 
uh, file, video, whatever, or it doesn't get that access. That is quite simple. All right, so Linteria is very, very highly customizable. You can literally customize any workflows, sections, and fields by yourself. Thank you so much and uh, have a great time. Thank you. Goodbye. Okay, brilliant. Well, I think that's everything today. As I said, please do um, get in touch with myself on Ontario if we can help any further. You will receive a recording of the webinar afterwards as well. But thank you very much for attending today. I hope you find it useful and uh, hope to see you again soon on the next Ontario webinar.